Okay, so uh, we have this problem here, and um, it's uh, physical science 4.2.16, so if you want to look at it again or go do it over and over and over again, this is very similar, numbers different to the problem we did when I started in class, ran out of time, also made an error, uh, so we didn't actually finish it, so I promised I'd give, put this together for you. Um, that, that was uh, section 7, section 3 I'm sharing with you because you could benefit because we didn't get to this when we were doing problems in class. So Newton's law of cooling relates the rate at which a body cools to the difference in temperature between the body and the environment to which it is introduced. So picture a room that's at, in this case, 21 degrees. Uh, looks like Fahrenheit because you're using F there. Okay, And 95 degrees Celsius would, would be wicked hot. <laughs> That'd, be bo <laughs> That'd be hot. So... Um, what happens is what's happening with this cup of coffee or any, I, I assume any temperature of the body at which a body cools and body doesn't mean human body, though it can, they're talking about some mass. Uh, so the formula is, I, I assume, but I'm, I'm not that familiar with it, but we have this thing here, a formula, F of T, equals T sub zero plus C base of P B to the T, where F of T is the temperature of the body at time T. T sub zero is the constant temperature of the environment, or in this case, the room, into which the body is introduced. And C and B are constants. Use Newton's, Newton's law of cooling to solve the problem below. A cup of coffee has cooled from 95 degrees to 50 degrees after 14 minutes in a room of, at 21 degrees. How long does it take to cool to 40 degrees? So typically these exponential problems come into two parts. This one's going to look like three, but it's really two parts. The first part is you have to figure out the details of the actual formula based on the circumstances at hand. And they give us all the information, and that's the hard part in my opinion. And then the second second portion is to actually solve the new problem. So we're going to use all of this information here, all this stuff right here, to figure out what th these letters are, at least at least T sub 0, C, and B, and then use that equation once in more detail we can solve this question or answer this question. I'm going to so uh, we know that our, our points, our points having to do with this graph, our X and Y, are really going to be T and F of T. And what they've done is they've given us one point, though it's not necessarily easy to see. Hopefully you realize that T sub zero is the constant temperature of the environment into which the body is introduced. And they tell us about this cup of coffee after 14 minutes in a room of 21 degrees. So they're talking about this 21 degrees. That's the environment. So I immediately know that we have this detail, 21 degrees, 21 degrees plus C times B to the T. Now, they've given us another piece of information as well, which this one's the hardest, I think, to, to discern from all this information. A cup of coffee is cold from 95 degrees. So it starts at 95 degrees. When it's 95 degrees, what is the time? What is time T? Not T sub zero, but time T this t right here in the exponent. So at time, what is f of t equal to 95 degrees? That's my question to you. So hopefully you're saying it's time zero, time zero. So we know that it's 95 degrees, 21 degrees, plus c b at time zero. The kind of cool part to that is that at time zero, this part of our equation is one, which means that I get 95 degrees equals 21 degrees plus C times one, which is just C. And so now I can figure out what this constant is, C. Subtract 21 from both sides and I get 74 degrees is equal to C. So this kind of resets my function to be F of T equals 21 plus 74 B to the T. So let's set that up. F of T equals 21 degrees plus 74 degrees times B to the T. Now, 
I still have three variables and I really just want to have t and the f of t. So what other information do we have? What they've given us right here, right here, is a drop, is a ending temperature, a final temperature of 50 degrees after 14 minutes. So that's an initial scenario, a second scenario, because there were two variables we had to find, and then this third scenario, which we're going to answer once we get the formula. So I'm going to put 50 degrees in here, 21 degrees plus 74 degrees equals, or excuse me, times B to the T, where T is 14 minutes. This 14 minutes goes with the 50. So in other words, they gave us this point initially, which was, I believe, not easy. Oh, they, this is what our points look like. In this section, we used the point 0, 0,95 degrees to figure out what C was. In this section, we're using the point 14, 50 degrees to figure out what B is equal to. So do a little math. 50 minus 21. 50 minus 21 is 29. Why did I do that? 29 degrees. And I so because because I subtracted 21 from both sides. So this is going to be 74 degrees B to the 14. Divide both sides by 74 degrees. And so I get uh, B to the 14th equals and have some patience with me, sorry. I'm using my phone instead of a real calculator. It's kind of a pain in the butt. I know you guys probably don't care, but I find it to be kind of a pain. So 0 0.39189 dot, 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 okay? So now, how do I figure out what B is? Um, I think we talked about this in class. Uh, undo. Maybe we didn't get to it. Maybe I'm mixing it, conflating it with the other class. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise this power to the 1 14th. Reason being is if I have x squared equals 64, I take the square root of both sides. But what we've talked about already is the fact that you can think of taking the square root as raising it to the 1 half. And if you put this in your calc, this will be x over here. And if you put this into your calculator, it's 64 caret 1 divided by 2, that's going to be equivalent to taking the square root of both sides. So when I raise this to the 1, four, to the one over 14, this right-hand side becomes want b 14 times 1 14th, which is equal to b 14 over 14, which is b to the 1, which is b, right? So that's how I get rid of this to the 14th. But that means I have to raise this side to the 1 14th. So in my calculator, I'm going to point, type in 0.39189 blah, 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 caret, parentheses, 1 over 14, close parentheses. And I should get b is equal to some smaller decimal value, or I so believe. Uh, again, clunky, clunky typing in and whatnot. So that's going to be... 1 divided by 14. Nope. Arrow out. Okay. So I get B is equal to 0 0.935277. Hopefully that's enough information. So now, with that piece of information, that B, the base of our power, we can now write our formula in complete, in total. Maybe that's a better way to say it. And so I have F of T is equal to 21 degrees plus 74 degrees times a base of 0 0.935277 raised to the T. And now what was the question they wanted to answer over here? How long will it take to cool 40 degrees or 240 degrees? So 40 degrees is my final temperature, 21 degrees plus 74 degrees. 0 0.935277 raised to the t. So I can do some algebra and figure out what t is. So subtract 21. That leaves me with 19 degrees equals 74 degrees. 0 0.935277 raised to the t. Divide both sides by 74 degrees. That's a 7. And so I get uh, 19 not 18, 19 divided by 
74. And Desmos is telling me that this is 0 0.2567567567567 equals 0 0.935277 to the T. And uh, a couple different ways you can take logarithm both sides, etc., etc. I tend to want to change this to um, logarithmic form rather than leave it in exponential form because these bases aren't this or this base if you want to think of it as that is not the same as that base and so it gets confusing or not confusing you can't do it directly there or unless you're way better at figuring out these numbers than I am but um, I'm gonna change it to uh, logarithmic form and how do I do that remember this is the thing that I solve and it's all by itself that's the thing that's hard to get by itself and so I'm gonna have a log with this base so the log of base 0 0.935 277, and I'm taking the log of this number, 0.2567567. Now, that's a crazy base to be trying to use a calculator on, so I'm going to have to use what is what we called the change of base, right? Change of base formula, which was t is equal to the logarithm. You can use natural log or log base 5 or log base, well, not log base 5, like log base 10, but I'm just going to use natural logarithm of the argument, that number, 0.2567567, divided by the log of the base, which is 0 0.935277. So now I get to type in that into my calculator, which is a clunky, clunky phone version of Desmos. So function natural log 0.25 I hope that's six two. Looks like six seven actually. Let's scroll back. Yeah, that's a seven. Six seven. Six seven five six seven. That's right. It was repeating five six seven. Uh, close parentheses. Divide by natural log. So find the function natural log of. 0.935277. Close parentheses, and I get t is equal to 20.319455. Who gives a, a poop? And so, um, nearest integer, and so my nearest integer is 20. Pow! That's what I was looking for. So again, sorry about the class today. Hopefully that works for you. This seems to me, from my recollection, to be the most complicated question that I've seen in this set of questions. Uh, let's see. 